Can we get people to really form authentic relationships with the natural world? I mean, we share this, this space with all these neighbors and we don't even know their names. If we can just open that door to get people just to start paying attention to the, the world around them, I think that's where this whole journey of actually caring about nature and also protecting nature starts. So iNaturalist is, a, is one of the world's largest citizen science sites. So millions of people use iNaturalist to explore their backyards, but also to generate data for science and conservation. So you download the app, go outside, and, and we encourage people just to take a picture of whatever interests them, any living thing. So maybe you see a butterfly or a bee, or you turn over a log and see a snail. So just getting people outside, learning the species around them is a great way to build a constituency for nature. But we also need information. We need to have the data available to inform decision making and make judicious use of scarce conservation resources. What's really unique about iNaturalist is that we have the ability to census hundreds of thousands of species annually, which has never before existed. We're censusing this huge portion of the tree of life. And that really is because iNaturalist accepts data on plants and insects where the real biodiversity is. We just passed 200 million observations this summer, which is pretty exciting. I was doing the math on this, and if one person went out and made a thousand observations every day and kept doing that, it would take 500 years to reach that. So of those 200 million observations, they represent about 500,000 species, and that's about one in four species on the planet. Once we have those species represented in the data set, the next threshold is to try to get enough data on them so that we can actually model them and make predictions. This data set is really important for science. It's produced about uh, 5,000 different scientific publications, and those range from everything from tracking invasive species, trying to understand how species re respond to climate change, conservation planning and management. So it's a really important backbone data set, not just for science, but also for artificial intelligence and teaching AIs about the natural world. Current projections are that a million species are threatened with extinction this century. So our mission is to try to build a global movement for nature. So we see groups around the world that are using iNaturalist to set up bio blitzes, to monitor and remove invasive species, to restore habitats, to advocate for and track rare species. I like to think of a bio blitz as like a flash mob for nature. So you get all these people coming together and the goal there is to document as many species as possible. So a huge part of it is, wow, we're gonna just generate all this data, fill in this gap on the map, which is really exciting, but it also turns iNaturalist into sort of a social event where it goes from being something just on the app to something where you're actually interacting with local community members. And inevitably that links to sort of the friends group from the park or the Natural History Society or the classroom or the university or the museum. So it really is a great hub for the whole sort of naturalist community to come together and try to achieve a goal. I would have loved iNaturalist when I was a kid because I was always trying to belong and find people who are interested in nature. I think iNaturalist is a testament to what we can do together, what, when lots of people are working together, the kind of impact that we can have. 